Hi YouTube, I've just got in for work, um, that's why you're in a cupboard at the moment. A um, couple of things, I just wanted to reiterate, the other day I was quite sort of, um, I think I was PMT and I've got my period now, not that you really want to know. Um, <coughs> and, um, what's that? and my ID card, it's beautiful. Yeah, really good, look. <laughs> yeah, it's got that on that side. But, um, yeah. I was pmt in, um, and also I was trying to reiterate that I was wrong about the um, induction meter and harp. Not that I'm, I, I think that harp's not a, you know, a big fucking threat, and I don't think that, I still think harp is being used in, in ways that um, we can't explain, but we can't prove it, because that, that, that induction meter was pointed out by my friend of being the sun, and I've been monitoring it the last two or three months and I'm discussing it with him, and he's right, it is the sun. Um, so... You know, that video was really to tell you that, the, that you know, the sun had gone into full activity um, more than anything else. Um, n no conspiracies and such. Yeah, there still could be something out there, but I can't see it at the moment. Um, but, yeah, no, a harp, I still have my feelings about harp. I just don't think the induction meter is what I was telling you it was. And I don't want to create, give it false information, particularly, and create necessary fear once I've checked it out and you know the induction meter is in line with what the sun does um, that's not to say that they're not doing experiments who's who knows but I don't think the induction meter is a clear indicator anymore um, also just recently I've been having I, all of my life I've been told I've got a massive energy field around me um, I've always resonated a lot of energy and people steal my energy constantly and that's what's been going on I've been having energy still stolen from me so the other day I was like I'm re-energized and fully protected and by doing that I have been re-energized since and I haven't actually had any negativity come towards me um so yeah I'm back to sorted basically um another thing is I did say to my mate that because I was feeling a bit down I said well maybe I need to do a rant that's what you should do it I said that involved turning the telly on then maybe I won't and um funny enough my friend come around later on that night for some food because we we eat at each other's houses once a week and um, was watching a video, and once we finished watching the video, we watched a girl who played with fire because he hadn't seen it. He forced me to watch it in Swedish with English subtitles, telling me that, <laughs> that you get more of a story. You don't, the English subtitles are exactly the same as the English audio, but the thing you miss when you listen to it in English is the expressions on people's faces don't match what they're saying in Polish or Swedish or whatever. So, um, yeah, it gives a bit of an insight into it. Um, I was probably related to the character a little bit more but anyway he hadn't seen it so I said I'd watch it with him because I'd seen it um, and then we, I put the news on I said oh I wonder what the British Brainwashing Corporation is telling us and of course it, it was all the protests so we had a little discussion about the protests um, I'm still not 100% sure um, where this clip starts um, Hillary Clinton you'll see her but only a brief second um, I, I couldn't get the camera on quick enough to catch it um, but she, uh, she generally, she just looks scared. Scared as, like, oh shit, we didn't want this. This was on, wasn't the reaction we wanted. What is going on? I'm not sure if it's government instigated or not, but part of me thinks it possibly is in order to bring in democracy. But it's funny because all these Middle East countries are saying they want freedom and that, and um, but don't mind if there's Muslim law, which, you know, if there's Muslim law in in the sense of... There isn't particularly much freedom. It might be for men, but not women. But um, yeah, they're, they're, they're what's saying they want freedom and democracy and all that sort of thing. <laughs> the funniest thing today. Now I live in Queens Park. Now England's a very diverse country, and since I was a kid, we've always had um, black people, Indian people, and Pakistani people. They've always been at my school. I've always had them as friends. I've always been around. And some of some of the Indians, Pakistanis, are still set in their ways with religion. Um, some of them aren't. Um, some of them are, are, are quite extreme. Some of them men. Right. Some of them see us as kafir or, or the infidel. Some of them don't. Um, majority of the first generations of Indian and Pakistanis, not Pakistanis so much because they're Hindu, but Indians, don't see us as um, kafir or, or, the, or the infidel. Um, the only thing is, is because in that country women are third class citizens, there is a degree of that, especially with the men. It's funny because the older Indian men are very, very polite, very, very, hi, mm, sorry, apologise, apologise, they're very, very polite people. The younger Indian men um, are not as polite, um, uh, you know, uh, 
I don't know if it's because they want to be cool or whatever, but they can't be seen talking to a woman. Especially someone like me, because I don't look a dolly bird. Um, like, the other day, actually, it pissed me off. I was at work, and there's this Indian kid, or I'll say he's about 20, I suppose, walking down the road, walking towards me, and he looked at me, and I said, morning, just ignored me. And I went, all right, be an ignorant twat then. Just instantly in reply, and he just carried on walking, and I thought... Yeah, your mum's taught you not to talk to women, or not to talk to women unless they look like a fucking dolly bird, right? And I just thought to myself, hey, you ignorant twat. But then, you know, English do it as well, don't they? But um, there is a larger degree of um, of, of that um, in the Indian race. Um, a lot of Italians have lived here as well. Um, they come over with other bricks and whatever else. So I've always had, um, you know, an African-Americans or whatever. Not African-Americans, they're more Caribbean and um, South um, Africans not um, African-American. We don't have African-Americans over here, um, as in such. But yeah, I've always had black, brown, Chinese friends as well, and Italian friends. We've had, always had quite a diverse selection of people in England. There always has been. Um, in the last three or four years, we've now got Polish, Swedish, Czechoslovakian, um, people from Kuwait, people from... Um, oh my God, what's that name of that other bloody place? You know, Eastern Bloc, basically. And on the whole, most of them seem quite polite. Um, they're pissheads. <laughs> oh, they're always drinking vodka. <laughs> you always know if it's a Polish person or not, because they're walking down the street at 9 o'clock in the morning with a can of lager in their hand, or a can of bitter, and drinking, and you think, and it's always the super strength stuff. And you think to yourself, oh, God, is that how you're going to waste your life? But then, if I lived in a dictatorship like Russia, I think I'd probably drink. Um, but yeah, no, I'm walking home and there's a load of policemen coming up the road and um, they're all sort of diverting the traffic. So I got up the top of Midland Road and I said to the policewoman as I was crossing the road, I said, they going into Queen's Park? She said, yeah, they're on a march to Queen's Park. Now, the Asian community do have a lot of little marches. But sometimes it's in protest, sometimes it's in celebration because it's some, you know, um, some of the, you know, days that, that they're... Um, religious days, but there's a load of people walking up the road shouting out something about Allah. <laughs> um, they're definitely Indian because they're coming into Queen's Park, because Queen's Park, where I live, is predominantly Indian. Um, so I don't know what if they're protesting about something or if they're just celebrating something. But, um, yeah. Also, the other night, there was a programme on, on, on BBC called Dispatches, which was all about... Um, Muslim, um, Muslim, um, what they call them, what you get them schools, what they call private, like sort of education schools, and a lot of them up Birmingham. There's there's like seven hundred of these Muslim teaching schools in England, and um, about two hundred of them are extremists, um, are teaching their kids to sort of um, cross the road when they're approached by a woman who's got no he thing on their head. You know, white people basically who don't respect Allah don't respect that religion and any man who hasn't got a beard bigger than a fistful is kafir, is an infidel and all this crap and it's really funny and this is in Birmingham and I, think, and I just find it highly fucking amusing because if I went to India now to live I think it's a little bit more lax than it used to be but while I'm a lesbian that's not allowed that's a jailable sentence over there two I'm a woman so I'm a third class citizen I've got not got the same rights as men so three I wouldn't go right now, that all these people all over the world are crying out for freedom, and they come to this country, and there are people in this country, I'm not saying majority of people who live here, but there are, there are a subsection of people who live in England, of not just the Muslim community, I'm talking about, that was just a little bit more extreme, but of other communities who want to change England to be like their country. Well, that's what pisses me off, right? I've got no issue with anyone coming to England to make, you know, their life. But one, don't force your religion on me. If you want to walk down the street parading about your religion, that's up to you. You've got freedom to do that. That's not an issue. Yeah? You know, calling calling white people who live in the country that you you fucking come to because your country is so shit, calling them fucking infantile or whatever else, and, you know, must obey that. Well, I'm sorry, right? But if you really think that you're an... Anyone out there who lives in England who is... A Muslim extremist, not a Muslim, but a Muslim extremist who feels that women who live here and, and men who live here who are actually from England, who don't support Allah and don't support that religion and don't wear that stupid thing over their head and don't let their women walk around with a fucking strip out their eyes and that happens in this country quite a lot. It really pisses me off that does. <laughs> it just does get on my nerves. Um, it shouldn't do. I just I try to ignore it, but it does get on my nerves. Um, 
I think it's because I know that the women are so brainwashed and um, I think it's up to them if they want to be. If they want to wear it, that's up to them. But common law jurisdiction is based on Christian law, right? This Shiha law, right, is based on Indian common law, which is law of their land, not law of England's land. Now, come over to England to live and then force the people who live in this country to change to the shit religion that these other people support, right, and have fucking absconded from their bloody country or ran away from their country um, in order to have a better life and more freedom of speech and then force this country to become as shit as the country they fled from, right? I have no issue with anyone having any kind of religious background. It's up to them, right? That's your own personal preference. Don't come to England and force the people who live in England to change to your religion. If you think England's that shit, and you think the people who live in England are infidels, fuck off back to your own country. Really. And if that comes across as racist, then it's tough fucking shit, because it is. Yeah? I ain't racist, but I, I, I have got no time for people, and I've seen it in, in, on dispatches, these, these Indian blokes going, you know, oh, you know, it's scary, you know, infantile, you shouldn't associate yourself with infantiles, you shouldn't shouldn't shop in their shops, you shouldn't walk down the street, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't approach them, you shouldn't have anything to do with them. But if we're that fucking much of a fucking sin, fuck off back to India then. Seriously, <laughs> if, if, if you don't like it, England, for what it is, England, freedom of speech, have the right to do what you want, right? Which, you've got the right to fucking practice your religion. I ain't got the right to be a fucking Christian in India. I ain't got the right to be anything. I couldn't be anything other than the religion that they're dear to. Yeah? Whether that's Hindu or fucking Muslim. But, I just find it absolutely, an absolute disgrace when people... try and change my country to the shit country they come from, yeah? I wouldn't go to a Muslim state country if you paid me a million pound. I just wouldn't fucking set one foot in it um, to live. I might go on holiday, but I wouldn't go to live. No fucking way. And I adhere to people's customs. Like, <coughs> if I went to India and there was somewhere where I had to wear something on my head, I'd wear something out on my head out of respect for their culture. But... I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable, so that might make me think different about going there. But I've got loads of, like, I speak to a lot of Indian people. There's a there's an Indian lady I speak to on my round. She's a really nice lady. Um, she's going back to India, actually, this weekend. And um, she, she says, you know, proper, proper Muslims love everyone. Yeah, the proper Muslim, Muslim community. Not this fucking bullshit Americanized. Um, Al Qaeda group that want to bomb everything and 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 think that everyone who doesn't wear a fucking summit on their head and have a fucking beard or a kafir or whatever they are or infidel. That, that that there's not there's there's a small section of society who's like that, and um, it's kind of I think it's some kind of conquer and divide to make us sort of like go against all these religions. No, I ain't against the same, I ain't against any religion. I'm against people who try and force my country to be as shit as their country. I think that's wrong, you know. If if you want your if if you want this country to be like your country, just go back to your own country. Where's the problem? Oh yeah, sorry, you've got no rights over there, but you wanna you wanna take our rights away so you can have another shit country over here. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm going to touch on the end this protest stuff um, of me and CJ talking. Um, and let me know what you think. Okay, peace, love, and light. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Real meaningful changes for the people there. Okay, I only just caught the end of that, but that's what, <laughs> that's what the United States government looks like when they're actually scared and haven't actually, um, <laughs> hasn't gone to plan, because I thought that maybe all this protesting in the Middle East was some kind of reaction to offer a solution, which probably some of it might be, but I think now the American government is actually thinking, this wasn't supposed to happen, <laughs> shit.
It's literally funny. I'm sorry. I'll get back to you. Hold on. I'll take some of it back because I think we supplied all the tear gas and what? It's looking like United Kingdom. Supplied all the shit that they've been bombarding. Like America supplied all of Egypt. Is being we don't look scared okay, so you to are yet, do we? Into, we'll do it. Um, the export licenses that we have with this country. Yes, it's, it's quite proper we do that. Uh, we do that in relation to Tunisia, to Egypt, and we will do in any circumstances where there might be any risk that anything that had previously been exported might continue to be exported in circumstances Starting. that we to be inappropriate. Right, okay. Um, we know that there have been continuing demonstrations in Yemen as well over the They've last used few live days. Rounds. Some demonstrations <laughs> in Jordan as well. And we know that um, uh, your boss, the Foreign Secretary, was over there just in, in the region just a, a few days ago, uh, just over a week ago. At some point, it could well be the case that the UK is going to have to decide which side of the fence it's on, whether it's going to support those protesters who are claiming human rights and civil liberties and so on, or whether we're going to continue to back regimes that for those people it's in the region... It's a little bit like Egypt, isn't it now? Well, you're trying yeah. to present a zero-sum game in relation to every single regime, which I, I just don't believe is at all appropriate. We've been very clear that the building blocks sure this of stability no. in political regimes are the same. It's openness, the it's accountability, it's transparency. We've also right. been very consistent in getting these because messages the to a variety of regimes in the area. They? All of which we, are. we have relations with. They put them into a democracy. Surely it's easier to round the whole lot up. Kingdom. But how yeah, each no. country responds to this? In Bahrain, there's been a reform program, a process in, in place for some time. In Yemen also, there is a national dialogue. There's various things going on. Our message is consistent in terms of the things that are important, but it's also consistent in saying countries have to find their own way through to the expression uh, of, of political aspiration, which we see some signs of in terms of what people are saying at the moment. And as far then as the uh, fairly sizable British expat community is, is in Bahrain, um, as far as they're concerned, I mean, are there any plans, any contingency plans being put in place to, to help them in case the situation develops and, and gets worse than it already is? I think as we saw in relation to both Tunisia and Egypt, we have plans available for everywhere. Um, in case there's any risk to United Kingdom citizens, and those plans were put in place extremely effectively. Get everyone out! The Commonwealth Office staff over the last few weeks. It's the same don't don't get everyone to come back, we won't be able to fit them in the country. No <laughs> suggestion at this stage of any risk. Only 20% of the population who live here are fucking English now. Most of the English are fucked off. Into place very quickly. That was Foreign Office Minister Angela Burnett talking to Clive a little bit earlier on. Now, there have also been violent clashes in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, as protesters continue to demand better living conditions and greater freedoms. Protesters gathered at Sana'a University to demand the resignation of the president. Clashes broke out with groups of government supporters when the protesters tried to march to the city's main square. There were also protests in Aden, where police opened fire, killing one protester. Uh, reports are emerging of large protests Seriously? in Libya's second city, Benghazi. This is all the alignment. I bet you this is the alignment and all the fucking solar flare and everything. Has ruled Libya for more than four decades. The BBC what do you mean negative? I don't know. No, positive, maybe it's positive. Maybe these people are just saying, we've had a fucking enough of you lot. Since the morning and it's like, today, it, maybe and it is a revolution. People are still yes, but is it orchestrated? Speed. They tell me they've heard what they what by the government. Like gunfire being shot. As in, a, the stage, have they brought it around to the their brainwashing? Or has it happened because... You, you've got, you've got to look, you go back to the, the whole fucking Niburu thing. It says the end of an age. It doesn't say the end of time. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. So maybe we're saying it's in the end of an age in the way politics is running some of these countries that up until now have been a bit fucking bad. Away called Zimbabwe. Maybe some of them are like saying right now, no, it's happened. Yeah, but in the same light. Uh, 
So the new world order is one global government. So if you've got every single government to be a democracy, it's easier to round them up. Because if, if all different countries are kicking off and causing this kind of outcry, people will say, oh, we don't want this to happen everywhere. If it happens all over the world. Like, like with the wars, they create one global government, then it won't happen again, will it? But, but, it's, but then you go back, that Hillary Clinton was shitting herself there, and that, cop, and that but the, the soldier behind her was shitting himself as well. And they both look fucking exhausted. I reckon they probably haven't slept for about a week. I think they are genuinely shitting themselves. I don't think they saw this coming. Right, okay, that's fair enough. No, that's two sides of the coin, then, isn't it? If it I'm not 100% convinced it's government orchestrated to react like that. But there's part of me thinking that maybe it isn't. Yeah. yeah. But it's very, very difficult to work out. But yeah, that Clinton and Helen, didn't she definitely look scared? Yeah. They both did. And that, so, so that army bloke behind her. He looked, he looked scared as well. And he was watching everything she said. It was like he was ready to jump in the minute she said anything wrong. It was weird. Now David Cameron. He was just watching it all the time. I want to make something clear. Yeah, okay. Oh, fuck off, you cabbage fat girl.